Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel. In today's video, we're bringing you a mega review on this gorgeous Volvo XC40. Now, we did something a little bit different. I rang Adrian up and I said, look, what can we do that we haven't done before? And he said, well, look, I've got an idea. We're gonna give you the cheapest Volvo you can buy and we're gonna get your thoughts. This is the Momentum, it's the T3, it's the cheapest Volvo XC40 that you can get and it's currently the cheapest Volvo in their entire range uh, so it's the three cylinder uh, 1.5 litre petrol uh, with a six speed manual 163 horsepower 197 newton meters of torque and we're going to we're going to work out whether you really need all of the extra quit of the higher trims whether this is an ideal uh, entry level volvo uh, and really my thoughts on whether it's worth getting without any options on at all. So let's get straight into it. So as I said, this is the, the cheapest Volvo you can get and it's finished in this lovely metallic, is it metallic? No, it's not, it's not even a metallic, it's gloss white. It's uh, ice white it's called. It's the standard color on the car. You still get these lovely big alloy wheels. I think these are 18 or 19 inch um, alloy wheels. And obviously the C40 is Volvo's smallest SUV. Um, but you really don't feel that much of a compromise. These tires, these wheels are wrapped in lovely Eco Contact 6 Continental tires. Um, and as you come around the back here, you see you've got the plastic mouldings, um, the T3 badge denoting the fact that it's sort of the, the smallest petrol engine. Um, but it still looks a very smart car, does it not? It's uh, it's lovely. You don't get folding mirrors and you don't get um, keyless entry, but actually you don't really need it. You've got these lovely... Um, aluminium roof rails here uh, that's standard as well um, and overall it looks very smart so for the first way you can tell that it's the base levels of this grill here it's quite basic um, it's not black like you would get on the um, our design cars but also then you have just black plastic on the inside here um, it's not adorned with any sort of chrome or any lighter colors and you've also got the just black blanking plates here down the bottom. Um, you've still got a nice aluminium coloured splitter, uh, same blanking plates on the side there. And like I said, you get this black um, trim that works its way all the way around, round to the back bumper, which is again just a nice basic back bumper. But if you're someone who reverses into things quite a bit, it might be worth having this bumper um, because the scratches aren't going to show as much you're not going to damage paintwork and realistically you can probably just buy that part of the, that part of the bumper don't quote me on that but um yeah as you'll see we get parking sensors on the back you don't get them on the front um as you can see here and you also don't or do you get a rever you do get a reversing camera no you don't no you don't <laughs> there's no reversing camera um but overall yeah like i said it's a smart looking car uh these wheels are no problem at all uh, they're not exciting they're not anything special but actually having a slightly smaller wheel with a thicker tire it's going to improve ride comfort um, they're fairly simple they look strong and sturdy as well you're not going to get sort of any bent alloys um, and it's just yeah it's it's lovely um, so let's take a look at this little three-cylinder engine now with this being obviously a European car our engine release well, our bonnet release is on the left hand side here it's just telling me that i've just opened the bonnet as if i didn't know and we're just going to release it via a handle down here there you go gas strut assisted you can see how new this car is um, because it's absolutely immaculate um, so this is our little three cylinder 1.5 liter engine Considering that, it goes really, really well. Uh, it's 163 horsepower, as I said before, and what they're getting out of these modern, smaller engines is just amazing. And you've got 197 newton meters of torque as well, which I found to be plenty. Um, really, it's it's not ever been, uh, I've never found it to be too slow. It's cruised very comfortably at 70 miles an hour. Yes, you're not gonna be able to drop a gear and disappear on the motorway, uh, like you might be able to do in some of the more powerful models, but actually, is perfectly adequate uh, for what you need. This car is priced at £29,450. So you don't get hit with the extra tax. It's only £165 a year to tax. Um, you're gonna average around, 
40 to 50 miles per gallon cruising on the uh, dual carriageway over to this lovely Russia at Raglan Castle today um as a side note um we averaged 45 mpg um and it's just been it's just been a very very pleasant experience um just a note on this white paint you'll notice that a lot of police cars vans etc are all white and that's because white does a fantastic job of covering up any scratches uh, so if you're again someone who's prone to scratches or you just want a sort of a, a maintenance free um color this ice white you won't go too far wrong with it being gloss as well um it's yeah nice and simple but anyway so yeah this this little engine is fantastic like i said average 45 between 40 and 50 um on your daily commute probably depending on how you how you roll um but yeah overall performs really really nice it's not too powerful you're not going to get yourself into massive trouble and it's quite nice actually being a manual um which i think is actually the only perhaps not is the only car you can get in manual in the volvo range very very rare nowadays and actually this is my first ever manual volvo that i've driven um having owned obviously my own volvo and driven all sorts of the other ones from keith price garage this is the first one there's actually been uh, a manual so it's, it's been interesting um but i've actually really enjoyed it it's a lovely little gearbox so um on that note let's go and take a look on the inside um and discuss well these bonnet struts are very strong um what we've got uh, because realistically you're going to be looking at this car for practicality you're going to be looking at it perhaps if you've got a small family or you leave live quite an active lifestyle um you'll see here that i've driven it onto this grass bank it's absolutely fine you get a slightly raised up ride height and also the um driving position is nice and slightly raised up as well now despite this being a base model car you can still obviously unlock the boot from the key. Uh, so let's start in the boot and assess how much um, practicality we have. Now you've got a big door here, um, and as you can see, there's quite a decent space. You can probably fit um, a couple of paddle, paddle boards, you could fit a baby's pram in here, no problem at all. And you've also got the fake floor as well um, with a spare wheel cover, but you could stuff stuff down here if need be, if you need extra space. Uh, which is nice and it's actually very handy to have a spare wheel nowadays a lot of cars don't come with them you have to be recovered whereas this you'd be able to get on with your journey got this parcel parcel shelf here uh which is does it the old-fashioned way just hooks onto the frame of the door here and what's nice is that this boot isn't too big uh the the load floor is flat as well so if you've got heavy items you can just slide them in it's actually quite low the opening um it's sort of level with my with my knee um, so it's a, a very, very useful height. I think Volvo probably extended it downwards to make it more useful, to be honest. That's the sort of guys that they are, very kind, and girls, obviously. Um, we've then got some sort of pouches down the side here, as well as here, and obviously the Volvo first aid kit, one of the best in the business. What's nice is that you still get um, a 60-40 split on the rear seats, um, and you've also got a ski hatch, which is accessible here. Um, this is currently the uh, armrest. You can push that through, and the headrest. So you need to remove the headrest of your skis, or being Q timber is going to take up that whole lot. But uh, yeah, just a very, very usable space, very practical. Oh, and also you've got a lovely 12 volt socket here, and some hooks as well for bags. Now, just before I forget as well, if you're, if you're loading out heavy items, you've got these lovely load hooks here, nice and solid. It's just nice and utilitarian. For people who like simplicity, um, but functionality, this is a perfect, perfect car. Um, and you can see here where the electric tailgate would be, uh, the buttons would be, but this is just a manual. Now, a lot of people will just go, well, that's just less to go wrong. And you're exactly right. Get a rear wiper here as well um, with a washer. Um, and a here an emergency vehicle in the background if you're not coming for me um coming to the rear then now i am six foot one my i, I like to claim i'm six foot two my girlfriend says i'm not uh, and this is my driving position in front so let's see how i get on in the back here and yeah it is perfectly fine um if i open my legs slightly sideways you've got these lovely pouches here uh, to put maps your road atlas if you're that way inclined or uh 
other stuff. Now this one does have an option. It does have the optional rear heated seats. Uh, so if you want to keep your children's bums warm, you can do. Um, and if I shut this door here, we'll have a look at the rear visibility. And uh, yeah, it's nice. As a kid, my parents used to have cars when I used to sit quite low down in with saloon cars. And you didn't get this lovely view out of the windscreen. Um, and looking through to that cabin there as well. You don't feel like you've got the, the, the lowest spec model in the range, to be honest. Um, here's the armrest that we pushed forward earlier. Uh, two cups there. Um, and it's finished in this nice sort of durable cloth as well. Uh, what I like is the premium design cues are consistent throughout the Volvo range. So you've got these lovely dials here. Um, still got the same click and sturdiness as the higher spec models. And then also we've got, um, like I said, the heated seats. We've also got USB charging two usb c's in there as well to charge electronics and two reasonable sized door bins i mean you're not going to get all sorts of water bottles etc but in terms of your uh perhaps the kids ds i no, kid I haven't played a nintendo switch for example would fit in there quite nicely in a case um and yeah it's just it's just a nice place to be if you're a kid um, yeah, you're not going to go wrong. If you're a perhaps a businessman, you've got hooks here to hang uh, suits, more up here as well. Um, all this is very hard wearing. It's easy to wipe down. Thankfully, I hadn't activated the child lock there. Um, so any sort of sticky bits or sticky hands and everything, you can just wipe down quite easily. Then you've got a lovely recycled um, fibre um, carpeting as well, which uh, stops stuff rattling around in the pocket as well as just providing a nice um, sort of finish on the car as well and then we've got two um window switches here and a lovely aluminium trim and you'll see what i mean by the fact that the the premium stuff where it needs to carries through as does the practicality so we've got isofix points in both the seats here we don't have them in the middle but that's becoming increasingly rare anyway i think this looks like a, a dog restraint as well uh, that obviously doesn't come with the car. So yeah, two two lots of ice fix points, very easy to access, uh, nice and easy to clip in. And if you're really stuck, you can scan the QR code here with your phone. It tells you how to do it, uh, which is nice. Um, and they just clip in. Now these covers are forever coming off um, and breaking, but these look quite sturdy ones. They are removable. All you need to do is just pull them upwards. Um, you'll see that there's a clip there oh, i'm not going to do it just so i don't break it and then we've also got a little bit of hidden storage down here for drinks maybe snacks road trip snacks anything like that that your kids or your friends might want uh, for those of you concerned about uh, kids we've got child locks on the back here and what's nice as well on this car is the fact that volvo have extended the doors downwards to cover the sill so you don't then get muddy feet or trousers as, as people are getting out the car um, you don't rub on it this bit's always clean which is nice let's move on to the front then uh, where the magic happens you could say and uh, on this door again you've got these slightly more premium um, sort of what would you call that checkerboard or grid pattern um, aluminium insert nice aluminium door handle plastic speaker grill I think this is it blanked out maybe because it's not the premium sound system we have electric mirror controls we have uh, window switches you can lock the rears as well um, lock unlock as you do um, moving into the driver's area we've got a manually adjustable seat uh, I haven't found any issues of getting this where I like it so um, as you're concerned if you do come from a car that has electric seats don't worry about going to manual it's uh, absolutely fine now again steering wheel everything like that feels just as premium as any other car recently drove one of Keith Price Volvo's um, XC90s not like that but uh, a new one and this although it doesn't have all the lovely bells and whistles and lovely nice trims etc this feels just as quality you can tell it's from the same brand because there's a, there's a lot of core quality values that come through um, you've got standard cruise control we've got voice activation and we have a uh, trip computer etc here we have our wiper stalk on the right hand side with a multitude of controls as you can see um, fairly self-explanatory really um, same for we've got auto headlights which is nice um, a nice standard option and you do have keyless start so all you need to do is put your foot on the brake so i put your foot on the clutch and start the engine and the little uh, three cylinder draws into life make sure the uh, 
music is off so I don't get copyright strikes. And this one as well is fitted with a dash cam. There we go. Um, you've still got a lovely frameless mirror. Um, and we've got plenty of useful storage spaces. Two cup holders here, a small one as well if you wanted to put your key uh, or perhaps um, chewing gums or something. You've got a reasonable sized armrest. Uh, you can see it's fit, fits a decent sized box in it. Um, and again, yeah, just nice and usable, um, which is nice. Coins, I suppose, you could put in there. And then we've also got another tray down the bottom here where you can bung, where you could put snacks, water bottles, etc. 12 volt sockets as well as a USB, standard USB this one interestingly, not a USB-C and also an ashtray or coin store again if you're that way inclined. Um, again we've got these lovely control bank here which carries through from the higher spec and rest of the Volvo range I suppose uh, with a nice sort of volume knob here. Um, all your important controls so your hazard lights, your um, windscreen defroster, which actually has the uh, heated elements in it, so you can't see, but um, they are there. And you've got a rear defroster here, track, skip, press and play, uh, pause and play, and you've got drive modes as well that you can move into. You've got comfort, dynamic, eco, and off-road as well. Now, interestingly, off-road can only be activated under 20 miles an hour, just so you know that. Um, move across then, you've again got this lovely grid aluminium insert, which is quite nice, a decent sized glove box as well. Uh, you can see this one has a uh, new car preparation process document. Very nice, uh, finished nice white. And the lovely Volvo owner's manual. Um, very Scandinavian chic, very, very nice indeed. Passenger footroom is good, um, as is passenger comfort really. Again, fully adjustable manual seat. You've got a nice armrest that seems to line up very well with the middle one here as well. Also very good for storing your bag for the day as well as you can see there and again a lovely climate control vent as well passengers also get a vanity mirror which is lit which is nice uh, you can't say that on all cars you've got your sos button um, and on call button as well as your lighting options up here and then we've got a lit vanity mirror here as well which is nice microphone for bluetooth phone is here that comes as standard and on the screen here you'll see that we've got sat nav as standard dab radio phone connections that does music and phone calls which is nice um i've broken it now um car status as well you can swipe right and you can see the late the sorry the the options that we've got here, we've got lane keep assist, park assist, start stop, road sign information, speed assist, uh, reduced guard, private locking, windscreen wiper, service position for those who don't know what that is. Press that, your wipers will come up and stay up so you can change the blades, which is nice. And collision avoidance. Like all good quality uh, modern cars have, it's got a whole host of safety tech that's going to keep you safe. We've got our controls here for the climate, which is all done via the touchscreen, um, and just hitting that button there, as well as we've got heated seats. And this one has, this hasn't got a heated, it has got a heated steering wheel. There are a few options ticked on this car. Got a lovely six-speed gearbox here, nice small gear shifter. Gearbox shifts, it's very eager to shift, um, makes it very light and easy to use, which is nice. We've also got uh, electric handbrake, hill hold assist and auto handbrake as well. If you want to manually release it, you can just push it down and it comes off, pull it back up and it comes on. But did you see there, as I took it off, it had auto hold, which means it will hold the brake on until I move away, which is nice. Uh, so you can manually put that back on. So that concludes the interior tour, I suppose. Uh, we've got grab handles like you would um, in any other car. Um, it's just, yeah, a nice place to be. You don't feel shortchanged. Everything feels quality, solid to touch. Even the gear knob here. Uh, Volvo could have just gone with a cheap one if they're not going to use it very often. Uh, and But, yeah, it's a, it's a good, good solid gearbox. And this looks hard-wearing as well, this leather on here, which is nice. So, shall we get out onto the road, get into a dual carriage, do a dual carriage with driving, do a bit of town driving, see how this thing is to park, and uh, we'll then give you our final thoughts. Okay, so let's depart. We'll bung it into first here. You can see the gear is now indicated, or will be indicated shortly. Um, handbrake is just going to automatically release. We're just going to uh, make our way to the dual carriageway. Um, I'll go over the grass here so we can uh, explore the uh, ride height 
uh, off-road proficiency. It's only front-wheel drive, so don't think you're going to be going doing anything like Moab or any sort of hard off-road stuff. But it's it's suitable and practical for what you need it to do. Um, here you've got the lovely dials in front, um, digital of course, and you can actually see where we've got seat belts uh, fastened up in the car as well. I'm just going to go quiet for a second as I ease my way out of this junction because I've got a lovely blind spot behind. Um, there we go. And you can hear just how quiet this engine is. Um, it's excellent. <laughs> it is. It is an excellent little engine. Um, and I don't really see the need to go for, say, a T4 uh, in this sort of car. If it's a, if it's an entry level, um, perhaps you're a young family and you've got children, or like I said, you're the adventurous type, then you're not going to be wanting to go fast. This will be plenty fast enough for you, um, 163 horsepower. Now, there was a day where you, an entry level car would be 90 horsepower, but actually things have changed. So um, I'm just going to make sure my... Uh, entrance onto the uh, visual carriageway is clear and then we'll go from a 0 to 70 as if we're joining a motorway there we go, wait for the turbo to come on you can see we're up to 60 already um, I haven't driven a manual for a while, you might be able to tell <laughs> so uh, yeah it's cruised absolutely wonderfully Got a, uh, got a road closure going on here, so we'll uh, we won't go that way like I planned. <laughs> we'll just keep cruising along here, but you can hear just how quiet and refined this is. Um, oh, there's been another crash as well now. Nightmare. So um, yeah, there's chaos unfolding on the, the roads of Wales, but. Um, it's just yeah a lovely lovely place to be this engine the fact that it's so quiet means that you are very very isolated and refined uh, which is nice we're going to go down the junction actually on the uh, I think it's the 40 or the 419 um, handles well not too stiffly sprung which is nice you see we're not leaning too much as well around this sort of long bend and overall it's just a good good lovely smooth car so we just pull on now we're in fourth um, I've got a low fuel light come on and there we are just cruising beautifully we'll set the cruise control on now we'll just go accelerate up to speed gear changes are effortless cruise control on and that's it we're going to join our friend our fellow XC40 driver here and just cruise along very happily now this also does have a limiter, I believe. So if we, uh, yes, yeah, we've got a limiter here, which is controlled by these buttons down here, which is nice. Uh, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the cruise control because that's uh, more useful to me in this situation. Um, and you can see here, 43.1 mpg. I've got, and I'm not, I'm not particularly uh, efficient with my driving, but you can just see how how competent this car is. Um, at doing everything you'd ever want. We've got, we have got lane keep assist as well, which I think is probably a, a modern day car requirement now, uh, to be honest. But it is just, you can cruise along nicely um, and just enjoy any drive. Volvo managed to bring in that essence of you feel more relaxed when you arrive at your destination than when you left. Um, through to even their, their sort of what's the A449 uh, even through to their, their base level cars uh, which I think is amazing thing to be able to do um, and they brought in that quality you do feel safe in this car you can tell it's well made um, and just to daily drive I think it would be an absolute pleasure it's not something you really have to think about it's uh, all hard wearing in here um, and it's just a very yeah very well thought out car So in terms of your MPG on this sort of run, you're going to be looking at probably high 40s to 50. Um, this is what this car's very good at. At sixth, hour, at sixth gear, uh, 70 miles an hour, we're just over 2,000 RPM, which is diesel territory really, in terms of the gearing. But this, this little three cylinder is quite talky and does a good job of just giving you what you need. Um, it's quite a good 
multi-purpose engine when, when you put your foot down you get a nice little three-cylinder thrum as well uh, which is always nice but uh, yeah it's just an absolute pleasure as as Volvos are um, you might think I'm biased and I love Volvo but um, they're just very very well made solid cars for people who who want the car um, to be a good car <laughs> essentially uh, now this unfortunately well, I say unfortunately Volvo are now moving into the direction of uh, plug-in hybrids and electric cars so this T3 um, engine choice is coming to an end uh, fairly soon actually I don't think you can well, there's, a, there's a few left at dealers around the country but you can't order a brand new one of these now from Volvo it's a bit of a shame um, because it's a good little engine but obviously we're evolving into the world of electric cars and also the uh, other fuels as well, uh, hybrids, etc., um, as combustion engines are banned towards the end of the decade. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of change going on in the automotive industry as well, um, and obviously, Volvo have to move the times. But these are the best combustion engines that you're going to be able to get, um, and this T3 is no example. Who would have thought 10 years ago that you'd be able to get a, um, a three cylinder 1.5 litre engine with a hundred? the 170 horsepower is just fantastic in fact I can put my foot down at, in sixth gear at 70 and we move um, it's astounding it's just testament to how good these engines are and how efficient they, they are as well so um, yeah let's take you guys on a drive um, we've got a country road come off here and uh, I'll join you guys in a minute okay so here we are on a nice A road just set the sat nav as well so you guys can see we've got sat nav across the front here as well which is nice on the digital display and uh, just thought I'd show you guys all sort of the technology working together really uh, we're just coming to 20 here and it'll be interesting to test the minimum speed for the sat nav um, or we'll just set it to 60 <laughs> that's not ideal uh, how's that speed too low that's interesting so I'm just going through a speed camera at the moment so we'll uh, cruise very very slowly in this 20 zone so if we take it up to 20 now there we go you can set it so it's a minimum of 20 miles an hour for the cruise control um, perhaps the uh, the limiter might be more appropriate we're just coming through the lovely market town of Usk so we'll combine our town driving thing or our town driving uh, test with our country lane test country road test and you can see here at 20 miles an hour perfectly comfortable um, you have got good visibility all around actually which is nice the only bit I have noticed is when you check your rear shoulder um, check over your rear shoulder then there is a little bit of a blind spot where the rear window comes up at an angle um, but it doesn't feel big at all this car it feels quite small um, it's a similar size to an A-class smaller than the one series I'd say um, similar size to a Volvo V40 if you've had one of those before I don't feel uh, slightly narrower than I'd like um, but yeah it's just a nice comfortable car uh, it feels um, very very maneuverable the steering will get lighter um, at lower speed which is nice it makes it easier for maneuvering um, and I'll see if we can find a car park up here to just to test um, the parking um, how easy it is to park. Just, we're coming into a 30 now, which is nicer. <laughs> I find it difficult to drive at 20 miles an hour for some reason. Okay, we just weave our way through the town here. Here we go, like so. And what's nice is on these, these sort of residential areas, you know you're covered. If your child something runs out or someone slams the brakes on, to a degree, you don't want to rely on it, but there is collision avoidance to um, stop the brakes if you need it to, uh, which is helpful in a town. And the fact that you can just set the cruise control at the 30 mile an hour limit, or 27 in this case, and you can just meander your way through until you get out the other side to a faster road. In terms of the way that this thing, oh, that, here's a car park, let's, let's go into this car park here. Curb 
many alloys there. And this is a good test because it's quite a tight, small car park. So we will uh, see how we get on with parking this. It's all very easy. Um, you can see the left-hand corner of the, the bonnet. Um, you can you feel you know where the uh, the limits of the car are, or the dimensions of the car are, which is nice. Just let this chap park up. Um, and because it's a fairly compact car, um, and you've got decent visibility. I nearly stalled it then. <laughs> you can tell I haven't driven a manual for a while. Let's uh, park up now. So we don't have our reversing camera. Um, I'm intentionally reversing towards the car to see how long it takes for the parking sensors to kick in. There we go. So you've got a display here, which is nice. And you can obviously disable them like that. And then very, very light steering. I don't know if you guys could, can tell that from the video, but um, suddenly the steering has gone very light just to help us park, which is nice. And here we go, we'll reverse back now. We've got trees and stuff behind us, so I'm interested to see if the sensors pick that up. No, it didn't pick that up. <laughs> we went from uh, from loads of room to uh, we're about to crash. So um, yeah, let's let's get back out on the road. Um, after it passes the parking test, I'd say, and the tight manoeuvring test in this very small car park in the Usk village. make our way out and even over those bumps it's just lovely and relaxed um, just a very easy easy car to drive if it was a stressful day at work or perhaps your kids are in the back annoying you you don't you don't tend to this driving is not something else you need to worry about no, which is nice This gearbox also is a pleasure to use as well. I know I said it before, but this is the first Volvo manual uh, that I've ever driven, and it's a lovely gearbox. And now I missed the speed limit sign, but it tells me down here, which is nice. Uh, so if I, but if you feel what a person that forgets what speed limit is, or perhaps you don't notice speed limit signs, um, it's displayed nicely in the bottom here, which is excellent. We'll cruise along. Post its 40 speed limit. Oh, I've set the limiter. <laughs> there we go, that's the issue. Here we go. Now the car will drive itself. Here, there's there's no squeaks or rattles or anything that we can hear actually. It's the um, the dog restraint in the back. Um, it obviously doesn't come with the car, but it's it's a very very well put together car. Um, all you hear is a little bit of tyre noise. It's not really any wind noise. Um, if you saw that the, the steering wheel's doing its best to pull me back into the lane, um, and it's just a, just a brilliant car really. I haven't found any issues with it yet. <laughs> which is nice. Apart from the fact I can't wire this to charge my phone, which means my uh, my phone where the charging port's broken, um, I can't charge in this car because I don't have the wireless charger. But that's, that's more of a me problem than the car problem. Let's take it up to 50 and take it through a couple of bends on a twisty A road and see how she performs. Pretty effortless. You do feel it's a slightly higher car, you do get sort of a bit of a side wobble through different undulations, but you, you would expect that in a car that's, I suppose, a car that's slightly raised up. Um, but it, yeah, it doesn't feel this engine's so refined, a lot of three cylinder engines. For example, in my smart car, you feel and hear a lot of vibration, whereas this car, you don't get that at all. Just 
the, yeah, like I said, the air of quality, I know I've like a bit like broken record, but it's just an air of quality that all Volvos seem to carry through, no matter what model it is. Uh, there's a there's an isolation from the outside world that carries through. There's, there's quality in the materials and how they're put together. Uh, none of this squeaks. None of nothing rattles. It's all just brilliant. Because we've got the sat nav as well. This uh, it knows what the speed limit is going to be. Um, and it's already queued up. In fact, we're going to come into a 40 very shortly, which is nice. myself wanting any extra power uh, I haven't found myself wishing it was faster it's just been it's perfectly brilliant for everything that you need um, it's practical it is compact so it's not a nightmare to drive don't have to worry about it finished in this white it's paint you're not you're not worried about the paint um, it's I say affordable it's all relative isn't it but in terms of a new car nowadays this is the same price as a new Golf, and I think I know what I prefer to be driving so it's, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It really, really is a lovely car. And you don't feel shortchanged getting one with next to no options. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure. So um, what I'll do is I'll head back and we'll do our final thoughts to give you guys my ultimate opinion on this car. Okay then, so here we are back at Keith Price Volvo and I just thought I'd give my final thoughts on this car. I mean, just look at it. It's a fantastic looking car and it doesn't look out of place uh, with all of these other cars about. Um, you really wouldn't know that this was the lowest spec one. And to be honest, in my opinion, it's not a low spec car. These cars come amazingly well equipped from the factory. Uh, it's just testament to Volvo's um, build quality and all the stands that they hold throughout the brand um it's just just a lovely lovely car um interior is fantastic exterior is fantastic a little engine um really isn't an issue it's, it's a really really nice little engine revy uh, got a lot of character and uh, overall it's just a brilliant brilliant little car if you're looking to get into a new volvo and perhaps don't have the money for an XC60 or your you can only really afford a low spec car don't let that put you off um go for it because it's very well equipped like i said it's practical if you're a young family starting off or someone who's sort of a bit adventurous then this is the car for you um or if you just want a comfortable safe reliable car then you really cannot go wrong with the car i have in front of me here so um yeah let me know your thoughts thanks again to keith price volvo here uh, as you can see they've got an amazing selection um, of cars adrian's just over there talking to some customers but uh, thanks again to adrian as well for sorting this thing out these guys really are the best in the business and i made a video about them once talk saying how they were the best volvo garage in the uk and uh, i really do generally believe it so if you're interested in a new or used volvo um, be sure to come and visit these guys they're in the beautiful town of Ab abergavenny as well so if you fancy a drive through wales you can perhaps combine it with a bit of leisure and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.